Alrighty. <coughs> Excuse me. Great way to start a video. Uh, in this video, uh, I am going to be showing you how to get the configuration files off of the server that we just created uh, and uh, onto your local machine. Now, I apologize for uh, the tiny screen here because I couldn't get Windows in VirtualBox to go full screen and at the same time have this video thing be always on top. So, anyway, it's probably not really much of a big deal, but um, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, the first thing you'll want to do with Windows to get this file off of the uh, off of the server, so there's no website we can go to, you just download the file that was created, the configuration file. Um, instead, we will need to get a special program to do that. When I say special program, it's actually a standard program that's used by pretty much anybody that's in, uh, that deals with servers. It's called PuTTY. Uh, there are alternatives to PuTTY, but PuTTY is the one that I think works very well, very easily. It's actually, it's a command line program, but it's still the easiest one to use, I think. I couldn't get FileZilla to work with uh, DigitalOcean. Um, so anyway, so PuTTY, so the the URL is right here. I think there is actually a better front end. That's probably just a, a yeah, so putty.org is the web page and it says you can download putty here and it'll redirect you to the page that I was already on. Uh, probably most of you are using a 64-bit Windows, I would imagine. I'd, I'd be kind of surprised if Microsoft is even making 32-bit still. Um, so you'll want to download that and install it just like you would any other program. And then the program that you'll want to open, because PuTTY is going to install several... I didn't, okay. PuTTY is going to install several different programs. The one you're going to want to use is PSFTP. PSFTP. Uh, so P stands for PuTTY, S is secure, and FTP is file transfer protocol. So PSFTP is going to bring what looks kind of like a DOS prompt. It's actually not a DOS prompt, but it looks kind of like it. Um, and what you're going to want to do is the DigitalOcean droplet that you just created. You want to get the IP address from that uh, DigitalOcean droplet, and you can see uh, there's a very convenient little copy button that you don't have to highlight and copy it. And now what we're going to do, it gives you the instructions right here. It says open host.name. So what you're going to want to do, and this might seem a little weird at first, but it's actually pretty easy. You're going to want to do root at the IP address that you just created, that you just copied from DigitalOcean. And then it's going to ask you, oh, I forgot about this. Uh, the first time you connect to this, it's not going to do this the second time. It's, just gonna, it's basically going to say, are you sure this you want to connect to this? Because it's not familiar with this particular uh, host. This is the first time you're connecting to it. just want to make sure this is what you meant to do. So now it's going to ask for the root password. And it says remote working directory is root. Now, one of the things with the scripts, script that we just ran did was it uh, copied the uh, the configuration file to this working directory that we're in. So we don't need to do anything particularly special. We can run one command, git client, client1.ovpn. Uh, and now uh, we're going to, what's, what's, what's that? <laughs> What that is going to do is say, I want to pull this file off the server. And now I want to say, where do I want to put it? Well, I'm going to put it in C users A norm. I keep forgetting on Windows it's A norm, not A norman. Um, A norm desktop client1.ovpn. And now on my desktop, Oop, that's my Linux desktop. I, I minimized the wrong program. It is, it downloaded client1 OVPN. Although I already had that, so I want to double check and make sure that I didn't, that I overwrote it correctly. Okay, so now I did uh, client1.ovpn. And I can look at the inside of it. And um, so I've got... You can see that I've got several programs here. It's probably opened with Notepad. I'm going to go ahead and open with Notepad++. 
any kind of a text editor will work just fine. So you can see that there is in fact information in here. And that's it. We now have the client one.ovpn on our desktop on our local machine. This is the key to unlock the VPN in a manner of speaking. This is how the VPN knows, oh, this 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 guy, he's he's a good guy. You can trust this guy. That's how the VPN knows to I like bad jokes if you haven't noticed. That's how the VPN knows to trust the machine that's running it. Uh, so this file don't send this file to anybody you don't trust. Make sure you're very, very careful with it because this is the key to the lock of your VPN. In the next video, uh, which will be 4A, we will go ahead and install OpenVPN and go ahead and import the uh, the client one o OVPN uh, key. So will be able to get it up and running. That'll just be an example because I can't possibly show every single uh, client that uses OpenVPN. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.